This is CBS 5 News at 5 with Michael Benny. And we are breaking live to Fitch Street in Syracuse right now. We have just learned there were no working smoke detectors inside the home that went up in flames early yesterday morning. Three people remain critical in the hospital tonight. In about an hour from now, a vigil will be held right here by neighbors and friends to remember the child as they hold out hope for the others to pull through tonight. We are getting a first look right here at the baby boy that died. One-year-old Hunter Dubois was killed on his first birthday. Hello everyone, I'm Victoria Carmen Michael is off tonight. We are digging deeper into that deadly fire where there are still so many unanswered questions and the young man accused of intentionally starting that fire. We have team coverage tonight. CBS 5's Justin Page is live at Upstate Hospital with the latest on the victim's status and how family members are holding on for hope. Our Dan Mastinio is live at Fire Station 1 on the challenges firefighters face putting themselves in harm's way in an effort to save lives. And Stephanie Stanovich is live at the scene on Fitch Street at 5.30. She talks to a close family friend putting tonight's vigil together. It's something we have we hear about far too often. Officials confirm there were no working smoke detectors at the scene of a deadly fire on Syracuse's west side. Three people continue to fight for their lives tonight. It's a case that has many of us stumped as one family member is locked up, accused of intentionally setting fire to the home they shared. Let's get the facts first on CBS 5 News at 5 o'clock. Dozens of firefighters were called to the scene on Fitch Street. This is just south of South Geddes Street on the city's west side after three yesterday morning. Five people were inside at the time. Investigators say 45-year-old Susan Wagner, 16-year-old Michael Dubois, 18-year-old Karina Dubois, and one-year-old Hunter Dubois were all rushed to the hospital. A fifth person, 51-year-old James Gower, was able to escape by jumping out of the second floor window. Two firefighters were also hurt in the fire, one falling through burned out stairs at the home, another suffering minor burns. The baby, Hunter, later died at the hospital yesterday. It was his first birthday. 20 year old Charles Dubois is behind bars facing arson and murder charges. He pleaded not guilty at his arraignment this morning. According to court documents obtained by CBS 5, Dubois started two separate fires inside the home, then took off. They say family members called 911 saying they were trapped inside. CBS 5's Justin Page is with the live eye at Upstate Hospital where he spoke to some family members. Tori, this is a very close family. I've spoken with a number of them, both in the neighborhood and here at the hospital, including Sue Wagner's brother, who actually flew in from Florida last night to be here at Upstate. Sue Wagner and her two kids, Michael and Karina, are still listed in critical condition at this hour, and the rest of the family is still praying. Just outside the hospital, a grieving family is waiting nervously for the next update. Sue Wagner's cousin, Tanya Thompson, says this is the home Wagner chose to raise her kids and grandkids. She is the hardest working person I've ever met in my life. She walked back and forth her whole life. She's never had a vehicle. She had her six kids, and that was her main priority in her life was them babies. Her selflessness and hardworking demeanor is motivated by the love she has for her family. Get you the shirt off of her back. My dad went through cancer recently and she was there every day for him. She never questions anything. She just knows that family is where it's supposed to be. Now they're being tested harder than ever and surviving family members are forced to grieve and pick up the pieces after losing everything. The kids, the grandkids, Liam is only three. He needs clothes. He has nothing. Rosie has nothing. She lost everything that she owns in that fire. There is a fundraiser set up online for the family. Thompson says the outpouring of support has been heartwarming and very much needed during a time of uncertainty and pain. I just want to tell everybody, please say prayers for Sue, Mikey and Karina and baby Hunter. And baby Hunter. May he rest in heaven because he didn't deserve to die on his birthday. The district attorney tells me earlier today that he is aware of the status of these three victims here at Upstate, but any upgrade in charges for the person accused of setting this fire will be decided by a grand jury. Reporting live at Upstate University Hospital, I'm Justin Page. Thank you, Justin. Our team coverage continues right now with CBS 5's Dan Messinio. He's with the Live Eye at Fire Station 1. Dan. Yeah, the two firefighters hurt in that fire expected to make a full recovery. 
The flames were roaring as the uh, firefighters came in rushing in to help. Now they tell me training is what kicked in as they raced to pull the people out of the burning home. Now fire officials say the flames on Fitch Street were intense and burning through much of the first floor when they arrived. They say many times overnight fires like Fitch Street are extreme with flames taking over much of the structure, mainly because not many people are up to see it and call it in. Now fire officials say constant training helps firefighters know what to do in these dangerous types of situations. That even though something comes up that is out of the ordinary that now, as I said, those firefighters are expected to make a full recovery. Fire officials tell me today that they are expecting them to be back at work in about a week or so. Reporting live at Fire Station 1 in Syracuse, I'm Dan Messinio. Thank you, Dan. Tonight, a young man in Syracuse remains locked up without bail, accused of intentionally starting a fire in his home, killing a baby and critically injuring three other family members. 20-year-old Charles Dubois pleaded not guilty to arson and murder. Sadly, we've learned there were no working smoke detectors inside the home. Court documents say Dubois started two separate fires inside the home on Fitch Street early yesterday morning, knowing his family was asleep inside. Then he took off. Five people were trapped in the home. Four of them rushed to the hospital. One-year-old Hunter Dubois later died at the hospital. It was his first birthday. CBS 5's Stephanie Stanovich is with the Live Eye on Fitch Street to tell us about a vigil that's planned for tonight. Victoria, the memorial here on Fitch Street is continuing to grow with teddy bears, balloons, and more people stopping by. Tonight, friends and family will gather here for that vigil to remember one-year-old Hunter who died and to support his family members who still remain in the hospital. The family is encouraging anyone who comes tonight to bring more candles and more pictures of the baby boy. They also want Hunter's grandma, mom and brother to know they are thinking of them and are pulling for them to recover. Family members are still questioning why and how this happened, but they say this horrific incident has brought them closer together. Baby Hunter, he was adorable and it's a tragedy that his uncle did this to him and it shouldn't have to have been done and he lost his life too way or too early. And happy birthday, Hunter. We didn't get a chance to say that to him. <laughs> this situation just really, truly, deeply touched all of our hearts and just have to show some type of love and support back to this family because they were there for us when our grandfather passed away last year. And again, the suspect, Charles Du Bois, has pleaded not guilty to murder and arson charges this morning. Reporting live in Syracuse, I'm Stephanie Stanovich. Mm, heartbreaking. Thank you, Stephanie. And I talked to fire officials about what it takes to fight a ferocious and deadly fire like the one on Fitch Street. I'll have what they say. That's coming up. We might have a few lingering rain showers around before it changes back over to snow and temperatures take a dive. It's a chilly weekend ahead. I'll time it out for you hour by hour coming up. And that's next on CBS 5 News at 6. I need a tall ladder to the trolley side of the structure in the kitchen. I have a member in the basement. We need to get out. I just want to tell everybody, please say prayers for Sue. Mikey and Karina and baby, and baby Hunter, may he rest in heaven because he didn't deserve to die on his birthday. We got team two to rescue. Real on, Charlie Sun. Baby Hunter, he was adorable and it's a tragedy that his uncle did this to him and it shouldn't have to have been done. And he lost his life too way or too early. And happy birthday, Hunter. We didn't get a chance to say that to him. <laughs> And right now we go breaking live to Fit Street in Syracuse. We have just learned that there were no working smoke detectors inside the home that went up in flames early yesterday morning, killing a baby boy on his first birthday. Good evening. I'm Victoria Carmen. Michael has the night off. Now the fire set on purpose by a man who knew his family was sleeping inside. Now a family is fighting for their lives in critical condition at the hospital tonight. Team coverage is on the way. CBS 5's Stephanie Stanovich is live at the scene on Fitch Street where a family is coming together for a vigil to remember the one-year-old baby boy. CBS 5's Justin Page is live at Upstate Hospital where family members are holding on for hope 
for those other victims. And our Dan Masunio live at Fire Station 1 with the risks first responders put themselves in to give others a chance at survival. It's a disturbing and shocking reality that one family is now facing. A man accused of setting two fires inside the home his family is sleeping in, then taking off, leaving them trapped inside. It happened early yesterday morning on Fitch Street on the city's west side. More than 40 firefighters responded to the scene. Five people were inside at the time. Investigators say 45-year-old Susan Wagner, 16-year-old Michael Dubois, 18-year-old Karina Dubois, and one-year-old Hunter Dubois were all rushed to the hospital. A fifth person, 51-year-old James Gower, was able to escape by jumping out of the second floor window. Two firefighters also hurt in this fire, one falling through burned out stairs at the home, another with some minor burns. The baby, Hunter, later died at the hospital yesterday afternoon. It was his first birthday. 20-year-old Charles Dubois is behind bars facing arson and murder charges tonight. He pleaded not guilty at his arraignment this morning. According to court documents obtained by CBS 5, Dubois started two separate fires inside the home, then he took off. They say family members called 911 saying they were trapped inside the home. Now family and friends are coming together for a vigil as the victims remain in critical condition. CBS 5 Stephanie Stanovich is with the live eye at the scene on Fifth Street in Syracuse with more tonight. Victoria, friends and family are starting to gather here around the house on Fitch Street for the vigil to remember one year old Hunter who died and to support his family members who are still in the hospital. The memorial is continuing to grow with teddy bears, balloons and posters. The family encouraged anyone who wanted to come tonight to bring more candles and pictures of the baby boy. They are holding the vigil tonight for Hunter's grandma, mom and brother to know they are thinking of them and are pulling for them to recover family members. Karina didn't get a chance yeah. to say goodbye to her son. So it's more really, really basically for Hunter because he's little and he didn't even get a chance. And we're going to celebrate his birthday tonight at the visual too. And again, the suspect Charles Du Bois has pleaded not guilty to murder and arson charges this morning. Reporting live in Syracuse, I'm Stephanie Sanovich. Thank you, Stephanie. Emotions running high outside the courtroom today as the suspect went before a judge. Family and friends banding together as the victims fight for their lives at the hospital. Team coverage continues now with CBS 5's Justin Page. He's with the live eye outside Upstate Hospital with more. So the family has spent the past two days here at Upstate praying for positive updates for Sue Wagner and her two kids, Michael and Karina. All three remain in critical condition at this hour. Other family members tell me that Sue Wagner is raising her kids and grandkids at the Fitch Street home the best way she knows how. Her cousin describes her as a hardworking woman who loves her family and does everything she can to provide for them, working two jobs and without a car. They've lost everything in the fire. There is a GoFundMe online fundraiser set up to help financially, but emotionally, they're facing a test no family should have to. I just want to tell everybody, please say prayers for Sue, Mikey, and Karina, <laughs> and baby Hunter. May he rest in heaven, because he didn't deserve to die on his birthday. The district attorney tells me he is aware of the status of the three victims here at Upstate, but as far as any upgrade in charges for the person who is accused of setting that fire, those will be made by a grand jury. Reporting live at Upstate, I'm Justin Page. Thank you, Justin. Can't even imagine the pain they're feeling tonight. Our team coverage continues with CBS 5's Dan Mastunio. He's with the Live Eye at Fire Station 1 in Syracuse. Victoria, two firefighters were also hurt in the Fitch Street fire, and they are expected to make a full recovery. Now, when they rushed to the burning home, the first floor had already been engulfed by flames. Now, I talked to fire officials today, and they tell me that their training kicked in when they went in to save those people. It was a deadly fire, tragically taking the life of a baby on his first birthday. Fire officials say the flames on Fitch Street were intense and burning through much of the first floor when they arrived. At nighttime, when everybody's asleep, 3, 3 a.m., 3.30, that's a perfect example of a time when um, we, when we get a call for a fire, we have a pretty good idea that it could be um, a pretty severe fire. 
First Deputy Chief Stephen Miller says many times overnight fires like Fitch Street are extreme, with flames taking over much of the structure, mainly because not many people are up to see it and call in. Miller says in these fires, the thick smoke and scorching temperatures make saving lives extremely difficult and dangerous. In this case, firefighters pulled victims out second story windows. We always have a second means of attack. We always have different uh, areas that if one doesn't work, we can immediately switch to a different way of getting into those victims and, and find a way to get them out. Two firefighters were hurt, including one fell through a staircase. Fire officials say constant training helps firefighters know what to do in these dangerous situations. Even though something comes up that is out of the ordinary, that all of a sudden something happens that that very difficult to predict, their training level keeps them safe. The two firefighters hurt in the Fitch Street fire are expected, like I said, to make a full recovery. And fire officials tell me today that they expect them back at work in the next week or so. Reporting at Fire Station 1 in Syracuse, I'm Dan Messinio. Thank you for that report tonight, Dan. Breaking tonight, a community rallying behind a family whose home went up in flames, killing a baby boy, leaving the others fighting for their lives. Well, we're, we're really trying to hold it together. Like it, This is like one of the hardest things we've ever had to go through. How the family is holding up tonight. A step in the right direction for Jim Kelly. What's next for the Buffalo Bills Hall of Fame quarterback after battling another bout with cancer? And an unexpected hero, how a dog saved her owner's life with a bark. CBS 5 News at 11 starts now. And I'm breaking live tonight. We go to Fitch Street in Syracuse, where a memorial continues to grow at the scene of a deadly house fire. You can see teddy bears, pictures, candles, balloons, all lining the steps as a family tries to work past the pain. Three victims still fighting for their lives at the hospital. And tonight we're hearing a firsthand account of what that family is going through. Good evening, I'm Victoria Carmen. Michael has the night off. Tonight, a community is rallying behind a heartbroken family. As so many questions remain, why would a man do this to his own family? Team coverage is on the way tonight. CBS 5 Stephanie Stanovich is live at the scene on Fifth Street where family and friends have set up a vigil that we just showed you as the victims fight for their lives. And our Justin Page has the latest on the victim's status and how family members are holding on for hope. A home once full of life, now left destroyed, and the family living inside is in critical condition at the hospital. For the first time, we're hearing from the twin sisters who are trying to hold it together as their mother and other siblings struggle to stay alive. Let's get the facts first on CBS 5 News at 11. It happened early yesterday morning on Fitch Street on the city's west side. Eight people were living there at the time, but only five were home the night of the fire. We now know the home had no working smoke detectors at the time of the fire. Inside, 45-year-old Susan Wagner, her daughter, 18-year-old Karina Dubois, 16-year-old son, her 16-year-old son, I should say, son Michael Dubois, and her baby grandson Hunter who had just turned one, all of them were found in cardiac arrest and rushed to the hospital. A fifth person, 51-year-old James Gower, was able to escape by jumping out of the second floor window. Two firefighters also hurt battling the flames. The baby hunter, who you see here later, died at the hospital yesterday afternoon. It was his first birthday. A 20-year-old, Charles Dubois, behind bars facing arson and murder charges. He pleaded not guilty at his arraignment earlier today. According to court documents obtained by CBS 5, Dubois started two separate fires inside the home, then took off. Authorities say he then returned to the home where he was taken into custody. CBS 5, Stephanie Stanovich is with the live eye at the scene of that memorial on Fifth Street with more tonight. Victoria, it was an emotional night tonight here on Fitch Street as friends and family came together to remember one-year-old Hunter who died in the fire. And for the first time, we are hearing from the siblings of the family. I see I, I lost everything. My family lost everything. And my son lost everything, you know. It's just hard. The only thing that I had were the clothes on my back that day. 
Roseanne and Minnie Dubois were not home when the fire started, but they are still in shock. We're, we're trying to hold, we're, we're really trying to hold it together. Like it, this is like one of the hardest things we've ever had to go through ever. And we've been through a lot. The two girls have spent most of their time since the fire at the hospital. They say their mother, Sue Wagner, gave them signs today while they stood next to her hospital bed. She grabbed our hands and stuff like that. She was squeezing our hands. She was moving her fingers. Everyone who knows Sue says she is not only an amazing mother to her kids, but to everyone in the neighborhood. It means a lot. Like, she has so many people to come here together to show the support for this family. She was so strong. She took care of everybody around here. Like Our family was known around here like a lot more than we actually thought. Mm. So it's, it's nice to see that everybody's actually showing up and who actually really cares like and who considered my mom their mom. As many friends and family gathered around the house that was once full of life, they laid down stuffed animals, candles and pictures to remember the good times. My daughter brought a, a, a cow when we brought the candles from our church so people could light them. I gave up my th dog that I've had for a very long time and I put him up there. He's a stuffed animal. I've had him for five years and it's kind of sad, but I wanted to give it to them. The family wants everyone to know how much they appreciate the love and support that was shown here tonight. Bottle donations can be made and a GoFundMe page has been set up to help the family pay for any expenses. Reporting live in Syracuse, I'm Stephanie Sandovich. Lots of support tonight. Thank you, Stephanie. Team coverage continues with CBS 5 now. Justin Page from Upstate University Hospital. The family has spent the past two days here at Upstate praying for positive updates for Sue Wagner and her two kids, Michael and Karina. Family says Sue Wagner is raising her kids and grandkids at the Fitch Street home the best way she knows how. Her cousin describes her as a hardworking woman who loves her family and does everything she can to provide for them, working two jobs and without a car. They've lost everything in the fire. There is a GoFundMe online fundraiser set up to help financially, but emotionally, they're facing a test no family should have to. I just want to tell everybody, please say prayers for Sue, Mikey, and Karina, and baby Hunter. And baby Hunter. May he rest in heaven because he didn't deserve to die on his birthday. The district attorney tells me he's aware of the status of the three victims here at Upstate, but he says any upgrade in charges for the person accused of setting the fire will be decided by a grand jury. Reporting at Upstate University Hospital, I'm Justin Page. Thank you, Justin. One of the calls for help came from inside uh, that burning home. More than 40 firefighters rushed to the scene with one goal in mind, saving the people trapped inside. The thick smoke and scorching temperatures make saving lives very difficult and dangerous. In this case, firefighters pulled victims out of second story windows. We always have a second mean. Two firefighters hurt in that fire are recovering and expected to be back to work soon. This is one of the top stories on our CNY Central mobile app. You can get the news of the day, the forecast, sports and more when you download it for free to your smartphone.